obviously I'm doing this because um, one of the reasons we got the research grant is because it was widely perceived that there was uh, <laughs> a, a crisis of trust. So I'm really glad that these three weren't on the panel, um, uh, judging uh, whether we got the money or not. And what I want to argue is that actually there is a crisis of trust, but it's not simply just in levels of trust. It's in the capacity for people to engage in skeptical judgments or appropriate judgments about who to trust and who to not trust. So for me, the crisis of trust is that we're all struggling, and it's especially the case in politics, to actually make a judgment that is appropriately skeptical, but driven by evidence and driven by uh, insight. Because I think we could all agree that it would be a bad thing to trust somebody that's not trustworthy. But I hope you might also agree that it would be a bad thing not to trust somebody who is trustworthy. That making a cynical judgment that everyone can't be trusted is about as daft as making a judgment that no one, sorry, that everyone can be trusted. So the difficulty is getting, uh, when it comes to the public, making judgments about politics uh, to the Goldilocks spot, which is where the judgment can operate and you can actually make some genuine evidence-based decision about um, the way in which politicians are behaving. Now, in the book, The Good Politician, which I'm pleased to say runs to at least 350 pages, <laughs> uh, what we used is a lot of data that goes beyond the survey data, although we did use a lot of survey data, but one of the difficulties is that the best survey data in most countries only really goes back to the 1980s. In some countries, it goes back a little bit further. But I think if you're able to stretch the survey data back, but use also other material, and we use material from something called the mass observation studies, which were a set of essays and um, uh, commentaries that people uh, wrote about uh, uh, all kinds of aspects of their society, but including about politics that was uh, collected from the 1930s onwards. I actually think that in the case of the United Kingdom, we can fairly confidently say there has been a decline of trust in politics and also a decline in people's capacity to make appropriately skeptical judgments uh, about yeah. politics as well. So what's really interesting about the 1940s and 50s when you listen to people writing about their experience of politics is that they actually got to judge politicians in the here and now. So they had hustings that were actually genuine and real instead of organized mass media events where only party apparatchiks can turn up. Uh, they actually had, and I know this will uh, put you off completely, my idea of skeptical trust, half hour broadcasts by politicians. <laughs> Uh, but one of the things that was constantly mentioned in people's commentary on this is this, this half an hour was fantastic because it just about gave them enough time and enough rope to hang themselves <laughs> uh, so they couldn't uh, develop a good argument. But alternatively, it enabled people to feel that they could genuinely sort the wheat from the chaff. And I think that one of the problems we've got at the moment is that our politics is now designed so it's virtually impossible uh, for people to do that. And so what our research project is trying to get at is whether we can actually develop not a measure of trust, <coughs> but a measure of the scale and quality of sceptical trust that exists in different societies.